You're now listening to the Chewing Ground Podcast. What is up? Oh, nothing hits better than a fresh can of the dry. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, long time, no talk, guys. Not really, but uh, it's been a while since I filmed a podcast. It's actually 1 a.m. on a Monday. Well, technically Sunday, but it's Monday because it's 1 a.m. And I'm out here filming a podcast. It probably won't be too long because I'm going to get tired at some point. Uh, This is the final thing I needed to do today. Might even edit it after. Who knows? I might be too tired for that. But anyways, today I have a special episode. It won't be too long. Um, It's a solo podcast. It's been a while since I've done it just by myself. And uh, I have a couple things I want to talk to you guys about. And there's some things going on in life that I would love to chat about. And um, yeah, I just my past few weeks have been insane. Um, I have a slew of guests coming up. So do not, do not worry. I have uh, actually a co-star in the episode of of I Can See Your Voice that I was on. Uh, If you guys didn't know, I was on an episode of Fox's I Can See Your Voice. Uh, It was insane. We're going to actually talk about that today. And um, I have one of these singers or the fake or real singers, you guys are going to have to guess. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to have one of them on uh, air which is going to be a blast and uh, or not on air on the podcast. And I'm also going to have, um, sorry, I'm also going to have, I had to adjust the headphones. Uh, I'm also going to have a um, Miss America, the the next Miss America, I said Miss America, Miss USA, North Carolina on the podcast. It's going to be great. I'm really excited for that. Um, I, I have a few other guests too, but we'll, we'll, we'll leave you guys in a little bit of suspense. I have a model coming on a bunch of stuff. Anyways, so with that being said, today, uh, the things we're going to be talking about is my whole experience on TV. That was insane. Um, it was a blast, honestly. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited to tell you guys from start to bottom, how I got there, everything like that. Um, I'm going to answer a few questions, uh, like two or three that I got uh, out of like, I think I got like five questions. I don't know. I'm going to answer a few of them. And I'm going to talk to you guys about what has been going on in my life and how insane these past few weeks are Uh, from being on TV to being in Miami, um, to being in Charlotte uh, for their first ever MLS game, home game in Charlotte. Uh, They just got a new team there. It was insane. Huge shout out to Tactical Manager TV, uh, Filippo Silva. He invited me out, and that was a blast, man. I really appreciate that. Also, I'm going to talk to you, you guys about the ending of Euphoria and the Batman movie. I believe it's called The Batman. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I actually know. Um, anyways, guys, so that's pretty much the topics today. There's going to be timestamps across, so if you guys aren't interested in the topic, just skip through. But I would really, really appreciate it if you guys could share this podcast or like and subscribe, of course. Anyways, let's get into the topics, man. Um, so you guys are going to see my screen recording up here. And uh, as you guys can see, I was on a TV show. I was on I Can See Your Voice Um which is Ken Jeong, if you guys didn't know the, hold on, I'll show you guys. I have pictures with him on here. Ken Jeong, the legend, the GOAT himself. Actually, he was in North Carolina just, uh, I think, two days ago. Yo, no, he was, yeah, he was here two days ago for um, the Duke and Carolina game. It was like Coke, uh, it was like Coach K's last final game, which was, in, or final like home game in the stadium, which is insane. Uh I'm not a Duke fan. I'm a Carolina fan, but I respect Coach K. I'm not one of those crazy nuts that it's not going to respect what's real. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, Ken Jeong, man, you're a freaking legend. He was so fun to be with. And um, if you guys didn't know how everything went, I won't spoil everything, but pretty much um, the episode aired, uh, I believe, two Wednesdays ago from when this podcast uh you know, went on, you guys can still check it out on Hulu, Fox, or anything that streams Fox's uh, TV shows. Uh, I know Hulu for sure has it, though. But pretty much, um, a long t- this is the quick synopsis of the story of how I got there, okay? So, it, it, it's actually insane. So, I got reached out, um, Reagan, one of the uh, producers, or like one of the casting uh, people, they hit me up, she hit me up, she's like, hey, you have a great face uh, for TV, I think, or uh, I think you'd be great for the TV, sh- uh, for this game show and i was like oh yeah uh, i didn't really know too much about the game show i've heard of it for sure seen commercials but never watched it i watched a few episodes and you know i told her i was like yeah i'm definitely interested it, it seems so hard but i'm down um went through the casting they loved it they loved me i guess um and i guess ken loved me because he has he's one of the producers so uh, after that it, you know next thing you know they were flying me out a week after we had 
And I'm not going to tell you guys an extensive story just because for the sake of time, one and two, uh, my maybe the next podcast, I believe, is going to be with a co-star of my episode. And we're going to actually like break down our experiences and compare. So you guys got to stay tuned for next week. But pretty much I flew out to L.A., uh, stayed in a hotel. It was insane. And, you know, while I was on TV or while I, we were filming this process it was all during one day. I was able to meet Ken, Shaggy, um, Adriana, uh, Adrian, uh, Balloon, or Ballon. I don't, bro, I'm butchering that name. You guys are going to hate me for that, but uh, the Cheetah Girl. Y'all know what's up, bro. We all had crushes. I had the biggest crush on her when I was little, bro. Y'all already know. But um, I met uh, Rachel, which she's she's from, um, she was the therapist in Lucifer, which was awesome. And she was on The Hangover as well, or in The Hangover as well. And, um, Man, Sherry Hines, you know, uh, oh, Margaret Show. How could I forget? Margaret Show was awesome. And man, it was just, it was a wild experience. And, you know, some of, one of the greatest things that I'm going to tap into right now, just because I'm not going to spend too much time on the next podcast talking about, is just, I just appreciate so many people watching the episode but also just contacting me man i had people from high school i had people from college of course my my closest closest friends which um i would never take for granted i appreciate each and every one of you guys you guys are probably some of the ones who actually are supporting this podcast which i love you guys for but um yeah just some uh, so many people showing me love and you know people from vietnam from my hometown i don't even know but they know me from my family and stuff like that they they hit me up and through facebook it was it was crazy experience you know um but i'm gonna say something and i don't know i, I guess i don't want to i don't want to make it sound bad but like you know i that stuff awesome everything was awesome but in the moment it was hard to almost appreciate everything because the next day I was already like, okay, what can I do next? Like, what's my next big thing? Like, what what's my next project? What can I do that's uh, not only exciting in my life and to my experience, but also like to my pages, my social media. So I'm just like, boom, boom, boom. But you know, I, I, I did sw try to sit in on the moment and you know, there'll be bits and uh, times throughout the week where I'm just like, damn, that really happened. That was crazy. Um, and I, it actually filmed like a year ago. So, you know, just that airing was just surreal it almost brought every all the feelings back of uh the nervousness it was my, it was my first time ever doing a tv gig uh even though it aired after my daily show bit but uh i was much more nervous then than i was in any of the other things i've done but like after that it was weird i i'm not nervous at a lot of things now like when i meet certain people i'm just like okay you know <laughs> but anyways um yo so my my last few weeks has been insane guys so after I aired, uh, that episode aired, I was coming down from the high of like all that stuff, like people hitting me up. The uh, I went on the news, um, the local news. That was insane. Uh, um, Tuck, um, Chad Tucker, he was great. Chad was a great guy. Uh, he interviewed me for like a, a solid two, three minutes on the local news. Rocked my Teddy Fresh. You know, I got to represent the H3 gang. I'm a foot soldier. You know, I, you know what to do. You know what to do. Uh, <laughs> wait, no, wrong one. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, you guys probably don't even know what I'm talking about. But anyways, uh, <laughs> it's 1 a.m. I'm exhausted right now. But I'm going to get this fucking podcast done. Uh, but <laughs> after I came down from that, the next, the very next thing I had to do was go to Miami. And uh, my sister has a waxing studio um, with, I believe, 11, 11 lovely girls that work there. Um, and 10 of them were going on this trip. One of them couldn't make it, but 10 of them were going on this trip and uh, including my sister. And she, you know, told me, Hey Loon, like I'm kind of a part of the team, uh, a distant part. I'm, I stop in like maybe once a week, uh, help out with anything excess. Um, I'm usually watching her other businesses, but, uh, you know, they invited me just to kind of be like their support, things like that. Oh yeah. Let me show you guys, uh, what I'm talking about. So while, while we're doing this, oh, that's not it. Sorry. Uh, here we go. Um, so I was just going to my page. So this is my trip in Miami. These are just some pictures from it. You guys, if you guys follow my Instagram, you guys seen it. But um, just to give you guys visuals. But Miami was insane, man. Uh, I, it was a different role for me because usually last time I was in Miami was for my birthday. I was getting fucked up. Did not care. Did not have to worry about taking care of anyone. But this time, I wanted to make sure that the girls had more fun than me because. And, and in turn, it actually made it even more fun for me, which is really weird. Like, 
I just wanted to assist everybody, make sure things were easy, especially because uh, some of their like first or second times traveling. Um, but I got to know these girls so well. And like, if any of you guys are listening, the 10 of you girls, you guys are dope. Love you guys. Uh, that was an insane trip. It was very fun. Um, here's me with a, uh, oh yeah. Also this speaking on this photo here, a lot of you guys don't know that I have a tattoo and I think it's so funny because, um, I got DM'd uh, a couple times. I got a few comments. You guys can read in here where it's like, oh, my God, when did you get a tattoo? Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Loon, you got a tattoo. God damn, boy, my boy had it, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, you know what, dude? I was trying to be humble, but no, I actually got it in December. I just, I, I don't know. I just never did like a official photo shoot flexing it. Um, Maybe I will do one day, but, I, you know, I, I actually didn't even realize how blatantly obvious this ta my tattoo is in this picture flexing until I was about to upload it because like taking the picture I wasn't like because if I was my you know I'd get arrested for all them guns I got you know say Bruh! um that was probably really loud sorry for all the Spotify listeners that's just listening on this um but uh yeah yeah so this is uh at Puerto Segua um great restaurant you know, it didn't hit as hard as it did the first time, but it's still a very delicious restaurant. And then uh, I randomly found this place with uh, two of the girls, um, Monica and Alyssa. Um, it was Alyssa's idea, and we went out to this place. Uh, man, I don't strawberry something. I don't know. It was lit though. Uh, and it's funny. I, th I thought I'd play, play a prank on them, even though I couldn't really fully play the prank. But I brought a whole outfit being their bodyguard. I thought it'd be hilarious. I wanted to go out in it, but we couldn't. Um, also, fun fact, I vlogged this trip. So you guys stay tuned if you guys want to see um, the Miami vlog. The issue I have is I have literally like three or four vlogs lined up. But I am this month, I'm taking uh, my YouTube a lot more serious. So I'm going to be knocking those out. Um, <laughs> LOL. Oh, yeah, we had the same server that we got last year what are the odds of that um he was a sick guy chess the air review was sick anyways let's move on from miami so how crazy has these past three weeks been for me insane i was on tv oh i was on the news i was on tv i went to miami the moment i landed back in miami it was like a tuesday i'm not dude literally i've been sleeping like two hours a night in miami maybe three just because you know <sighs> bro the some of the girls get up so early. I'm such a light sleeper, and I also get, be getting fucked up, you know what I say? But I, uh, I stay up really late at night. And so that's that was the vibe. And then I got home. I maybe got, like, one night of good sleep, and I'm just droggy, droggy, droggy. And then, boom, I got invited out by Tactical Manager TV, Filippo. He invited me to be his guest slash, like, helper um, in a project where he – or or as um, as media – uh, for his channel because his channel got invited out to the Charlotte FC first home game and you know as a North Carolina native I felt like it would had to be my duty to go uh, so I was like yeah fuck yeah man I'll go um, so we came out there it was a great time man and I'm gonna have him back on the podcast I'm also gonna have his um, you know his editor Dustin and his uh, like his pretty much co co teammate on the the project of uh, tactical manager come on the podcast soon and we'll actually talk about it then more but god that experience was so cool um sometimes i you know i think about like oh yeah, let me show you guys what i'm talking about by the way because i'm just gonna keep talking oh yeah here you go so here's a picture of my time in charlotte and if you guys don't know i'm literally on the bank on the field of the bank america stadium which is exact which is where um the panthers play and also all of the charlotte fc games until they build their stadium and Man, uh, first off, shout out to Tactical Manager TV. You guys got to check out his vlog. He did a whole vlog where, um, and that's what I helped with. I'm in it, um, where we filmed the experience of being in media and also being at the game of uh, a, 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 an MLS game. Although it's going to be spo spoiling you a little bit, it's going to really raise your expectations because it was a, re a record breaking game. It was the highest attended MLS game ever which is insane and it was in charlotte which is like an hour from my hometown which is sick um but uh yeah yeah, yeah. no no but um but let me show you guys some of the pictures real quick so yeah that's me and filippo great guy um oh yeah and i made J uh met jalen which is really cool if you guys didn't know uh jalen plays for uh charlotte fc he's one of the uh wing backs and 
he actually played in Kansas City with Gianluca Busio, who is on this podcast, who is little brothers of a buddy of mine, Matteo, who you guys have maybe seen in my Venice vlog. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. I got to talk to him. I was out in the field, man. And it, it was a crazy experience. Oh, yeah, I met a bunch of great guys. Uh, the soccer community is insane, man. Like, I'm going to say this right now. Regardless of what sports you play, I, okay, it might be different for other sports, let's say. But I feel like the sports where it's not, because soccer is so big internationally and across the world, is the it's the biggest sport, I believe, if not like maybe behind cricket i know it's it's one of the top two biggest sports but in america itself it's small it's very small and even though it's a big state everyone who watches soccer here usually watches international soccer and so to see the mls slowly growing then the people who are involved in american soccer or mls are so like friendly because they know that we are it's an uphill battle so why why fight each other when we can just all support each other and move on the way up and like even the la galaxy fans you guys are going to see two right here arnold frank oh yeah and their buddy i forgot his name sorry but uh the three of them they were amazing hospitality they were great guys and on top of that like they're LA like galaxy fans and they are so nice if you go internationally and you're wearing the other team's jersey you're probably gonna get fucked with you know what i'm saying like uh i know i did when i wore the venezia jerseys in sasolo uh sasolo or whatever however you pronounce it but yeah it was really fun um Oh, wait, let me just play some music. Oh, I don't think you guys can hear that, actually. Let me um, let me turn up, turn up the sound. Let me switch the sound. But while I'm doing this, yeah, it was a crazy experience, man. And uh, man, it was such a crazy experience, man. Um, here we go. I think you guys can hear it now. So this is oh, the national anthem. 74 over 74,000 people, bro. I don't even think the Panthers games get this packed. I'm curious about that. We they might have beat the Panthers. That star spangled banner. Okay, anyways, long story short, while you guys are seeing this, dude. This is fucking hilarious what happened though with the Star Spangled Banner. So at the game, um, there was a, I don't know her name, but there was a, a older black lady um, who, with a beautiful voice. And she was going to sing the national anthem. And she goes, oh, say, can you see? And then the mic, the whole thing, the speaker cut out completely. And I, we were all just like, what? So someone's getting fired. Um, but it was lit because 74,000 Americans are in there. So we're all going to know what the fuck is up. Um, but yeah, it was a crazy experience. We got to go in the meet the media room which was like so fun to see you guys are gonna have to check out um tactical manager tv's vlog so you guys can actually see the full experience but like it was so fun to see like oh this is where commentators are at this is where people who like um who do all media press uh news all uh, all that stuff and even the photography room and then we went to the press room after man man it was so cool and then at one point dude we got on the field and we were so close to the actual game playing like i'm li literally if i wanted to i could trip him like <laughs> i thought about that but it'd be so fucked up that's a galaxy play right there i right, look look how close i am that's uh uh charlotte fc's uh uh captain fuchs but yeah um now i do have one beef i want to talk about charlotte fc real quick uh great stadium great environment uh however I don't know if, and I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Charlotte because, you know, I rep at North Carolina. I'm not like diehard because I'm not super into MLS as much as I am into like um, Serie A and the other leagues. But I do have things I want to critique. Um, one, the fan base is too, I, I feel like they don't know soccer that much. Like some do, but like, so it's not as like loud and rowdy. It was fun though. Don't get me wrong. And another thing that I'm w worried about with um, Charlotte is they're 0-2 right now. And they're already not going to uh, sell the top half of the stadium because this is they're actually borrowing the stadium from um, the Panthers, uh, same owners, but still. And I'm like, dude, like if they're only selling half, they're never going to sell out until they play do a playoffs again. So that's kind of the tragic side of everything. But you know, you start high, and I guess with the lows, you can get some wins, and maybe things go back up. I don't know. But here is my biggest beef with Charlotte FC. 
Look at these fucking Jersey guys. And I, it's a hot topic in the Charlotte world. I know if you guys don't care about this, just skip forward. But, dude, Charlotte FC, who the fuck designed your jerseys? You guys literally slapped Arsenal's jerseys and then made it a worse color. Like, I understand that it's the colors of, like, Charlotte, the um, like, the Hornets, the Panthers. But, like, bro, what is this? The black ones are fine. Like, they're wearable. Like, you know, any black jersey is wearable. But what the in the fuck is this, bro? Like, why didn't y'all just hit me up, bro? And it's 140 bucks. Like, I honestly, I was considering buying one because, you know, I'm there. I'm not about to pay for 100, uh, 100. I'm not about to play, pay $140 for some shit I ain't going to wear. Logo's fire, but what the fuck is this? Man, but like, dude, please hit me up. If, if, if someone out there is listening, Caleb, if you're listening, man, just hit me up, man. Uh, I can design this whole thing for you guys. Anyways, so let's move on. Um, oh, euphoria. Is that the next topic? Oh, we're already here. Ah, oh, this is going by swimmingly. Euphoria. Let's chat it up. All right, so uh, over the last week, I think, um, not this last weekend, but the weekend before, um, Euphoria finished uh, their second season. And this is their actual Rotten Tomatoes right here. They have an 82 uh, critic score, 84 um, audience score. If I were to give a Rotten Tomato score on j just their season two, I, I actually think that it's an 85. I think it's a little bit over these two. Um, it's not like knock your socks off good like in the 90s, but it's, it's a really good TV show. And season two was significantly better than season one. Like season one was like solid, like fine you know like it, it it was it was really good at some parts and then some parts was really dull um season two six episodes out of the eight was amazing and at this point this is your spoiler alert spoiler alert um if you didn't watch euphoria or if you want to watch it and you haven't yet uh go ahead and skip forward into the batman segment or into the ending closing ending uh segments where i answer questions and stuff but um dude <laughs> I, oh yeah, by the way, if you guys are this far, I am going to answer questions at the end. Um, but the last episode, spoiler alert, last episode, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like let down. Like the episode wasn't good enough to me. Like it was mid, but that's the issue that they have. The issue they have is that the season two was so good that the last episode felt like it wasn't on that on par with everything else like if you slap the last episode of season two onto season one it would it would stand out it would be like a good episode but because it's in season two where every episode has been amazing the last episode to me was not that great i'm gonna keep it a buck hundred bruh i'm gonna get a buck hundred i'm gonna keep it a buck i'm gonna keep it a hundred um i have a few critiques and i'm just gonna point them out real quick first off what the fuck happened to the drug lady like what happened that whole season bruh that was like one of the coolest characters, the girl who, um, the lady who was selling Rue all the drugs. Um, like we didn't see her at all. And it is what it is. Hopefully they bring her back the next season. I know they're not going to abandon such a great storyline. They probably pulled the brand in um, Game of Thrones. Uh, okay. Now, specifically with the last episode, there was overextended scenes, like scenes that didn't need to be that long. Uh, first off, uh, fuck boy. What is his name? Not fuck boy. Uh, here with the tattoo like right here fuck man i forgot their names bro but um the guitar dude guitar druggie i'm gonna call him guitar druggie guitar druggie over there was jamming out and he sang rue his song motherfucker took five minutes bruh like i about passed out son it was like cool at first i was like oh he has a cool voice and then five hours later like the fuck how is rude not asleep at this point you know what i'm saying like i'm about to be and um that was the first scene and then there was another scene where they were talking about uh lexi was talking to rue back in time but also mixing it with a play about her um her drug issues and then like connecting with her life uh their lives and their future all this all this bs bro and it could have been condensed like it i don't know man i just i don't know and then also the very ending scene was also like, uh, I get it. Euphoria tries to be different with those scenes. So that one I can kind of understand. But dude, it just, 
I don't know. And the fact that they had everything that was hype in the first half of the episode, like they had me in the first half. You know what I'm saying? Um, the whole Fest scene. Dude, Fest got the best storyline, bro. I'm honestly watching this shit because he's carrying the team, bro. And that whole shit with Ashtray, I ain't even going to say shit. Like, that shit was crazy. I don't even know. We don't even know what's going to actually happen with him because they, they made it a little vague. So we're going to have to really find out next season. I don't think it's going to be over for him. But even if it is over for him, we'll at least see him, um, you know, then the funeral or whatever the fuck. You, yeah, huge spoiler. <laughs> um, all right, now. Speaking of film and TV, Euphoria, great show. I'm definitely going to watch season three. I, I, with that being said, like me saying the last episode wasn't amazing, it's still an amazing show. You guys should watch it. Um, last thing, The Batman. Uh, so this is their third installment or one, two. No, 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 no. Fourth or fifth reboot of The Batman. It's depending on which ones you count if you want to count like um, – all the old and classic ones too. So this is like like maybe the fifth time that it's hit theater with a um like a fifth different Batman. And okay. So here's my thing with the Batman. I watched it. Uh it's a three hour movie. So if you guys are prepared to sit there for three hours, m you know, get mentally there. Um, is it a good movie? It is a good movie. Uh you guys can see the Rotten Tomato right here. It's 85, 90, even though Rotten Tomato is not always accurate. However, um, I think that this is overhyping it a little bit. Uh, it, it, I, I'm going to say it depends on who you are. Um, my personal after the movie, I said initially, I said 75% like is what I would give it. But then, you know, upon thinking it's an 80, I think I'm going to leave it at 80. It's a very solid 80. Here's the issue. Um, if you're not, if, if you're a girl that, and the reason why I say girl or not even a girl, if you're a person that and it typically happens to be girls um, that doesn't like like really long build up type of detective style sh movies like um like uh, you know Eleanor movies like back in the Nora movies uh, back in the day um, where you you know the cop and the detectives gotta find gotta find uh, the, you know who who did it and then, like. Ah, man, there, there's a specific movie I'm thinking of that I'm trying to reference, but it's very similar to that. It's very uh, slow in some parts, um, but with, with like, build up throughout. But, you know, what, what I'll critique this movie and the reason why I don't think it deserves an 85 and 90 is because, one, I feel like we didn't see enough of Bruce Wayne himself. And again, this is spoiler alerts, okay? From he, this is your point where if you don't, if you want to watch the Batman and you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and skip to uh, the questions and the ending of this uh, like podcast. Or skip backwards if you guys have uh, already skipped forward. But here we go. Spoiler alert. So I feel like we didn't see enough Bruce Wayne. There was only maybe like memorable, like maybe three or four scenes. Oh, uh, the club, the time, the first time we ever saw him, the um, the morning. Also, that's another thing. Speaking of the morning, but th there was not enough Bruce Wayne moments, so we didn't really get to know Bruce Wayne as a character. It was just Batman, um, with sprinkles of Bruce Wayne, which is fine. Like I get it. If you're a hardcore Batman fan, you're gonna love this movie. Like I I'm I'm a huge Batman fan. That's why I don't think the movie is trash at all. Like, I think it's a really good movie. I just don't think it's on the level of, like, a, if I were to compare it with any of the other Batman movies, like, don't even fucking talk to me about the whole, like, DCE, uh, DCU shit, like, the whole um, Ben Affleck, like, Affleck, you know, uh... <laughs> Um, Batman, because that's that's fucking garbage. I'm not even considering that. But if we're going to compare it with the others, I'm going to say that this movie was a better pilot trilogy, pilot of a tri trilogy, yeah, pilot of a trilogy than um, the Dark Knight was, like the, where uh, Dark Knight begins or whatever, Batman begins. Um, it's better than that. However, it's not better than the Dark Knight or the Dark Knight Rises. Um, I think it's almost on the level of the Dark Knight Rises. And so what this what the good thing about this movie is I see so much potential. The fact that they started their first of the movie and it's an 80, it has uh, to me it's a little bit better than the the start of the other trilogy. I'm like, okay, they could really go somewhere with this. And the best thing that I'm gonna give credit to is the acting. Um Robert Pattison fucking Edward fucking butt fucked this role, bro. Like, I thought he was going to come out here with, like, vampire shit, you know what I'm saying? And he was going to be like, Bella, what's up, baby? Um, but nah, he was like, I'm Batman. 
No, I'm just playing. Uh, he did. He had a unique. You know, he had a unique take on Batman. But he, a very um, very dark comic slash cartoon like the old classic comics slash the classic cartoons type of Batman, which I like. Like it was realistic. It was really realistic. Um, the acting carried it down, and also the buildup of the villains, like how they in. In, intertwined so many of Batman's classic villains and build up their story for what is hopefully the next movie is gonna like really introduce the true villains because like they're building up the Penguin, they're building up the Riddler who is um a main main villain in this. They built oh and they had a huge cameo scene that you know I feel like I freaked out and no one in my theater freaked out but I freaked out of uh of a certain clown that you guys might might know um but yeah like. They really set, they really set it up well for the villains, which is huge in Batman because Batman has notorious villains, probably the most notorious in uh, all of DC and possibly all of like comics. You know, like I can't think of like any specific hero that has more notable villains than Batman himself. Um, so they set him up really well. Now the issues that I have is it was a little dragged out. Again, it's a three hour movie, so I understand. To me personally, there's certain scenes that could have been condensed, could have been shortened, or just taken out, bro. The whole fucking ending scene where him and a uh, Catwoman drove off in a motorcycle for like three minutes, I was just like, cool. But I thought the movie was already over. So I was just like, okay, all right, we're going to watch them drive away. In a very uh, not dramatic scene. And then um, also like the part where he... Uh, th- another minor critique. Um, they they built up certain scenes so much. But then the payoff was really weird. Like he was hanging on an electricity cord. And they made it really dramatic when he cut it. I thought he was going to like really get hurt. Because like the electricity, water. Boom. And then he starts swimming. And I'm like, oh. So nothing really came about him falling. But you know... Scenes like that doesn't ruin the movie. The movie was good. Um, not amazing. I'd say the movie is good. Between good and great. Solid movie. Definitely watch it. Uh, would I watch it again? Probably not unless someone else is watching. However, I will watch the next one for sure. Like I really think the next one and the one after will be amazing. They really set it up well. Uh, Batman's going to be great. But yeah, if you guys have been listening to this podcast, sorry. Um, First off, sorry if you guys don't like the topics of this one. This one was more about me and things that's been going on in my life between, you know, TV, Miami, uh, Charlotte FC. Uh, oh, fun fact, I got a new tattoo in Miami. Ooh, I'm going to have to tell you guys about that later. Um, a small one. Um, and then, you know, me watching Euphoria, Batman, everything like that. But, uh, yeah, this is a quickie. Um, I, I have a lot of, you know, big ones coming up soon. Uh, I do want to address... The questions I got from Instagram stories, I think I only got a few, but um, let me see if I can pull them up on here. But uh, while I'm doing that, um, I want to thank you guys if you guys listen to this because you know it's a short one. It's literally just me fucking shitting around, talking and telling stuff. Uh, I do have really solid episodes coming up of this podcast. Um, you know, I'm still on the works of doing a Bachelor series that I need to set up soon. Um, I'm on top of doing the Bachelor series. I have, you know, Miss Miss NC coming back on. Uh, the, the the new one, not coming back. Um, the new Miss NC coming in. Also, uh, the the singer, one of the singers in my episode of uh, I Can See Your Voice is coming on. I, I'm doing an episode with the homie, Zoran. Um, I also got a model who's coming on and hopefully a Twitch streamer. We'll see. Um yeah, I have, a, I have a lot of big things coming on, guys, and I'm still filming. I'm going to Houston this month, going to New York next month. Like, it's it's been packed, and thank you if you guys have been sticking around for the journey. Um, But trust me, this is only the beginning. Sorry if this podcast has not been very eventful, by the way. It's literally just me talking, talking shit about myself. I haven't really talked about any new stuff. Oh, yeah, speaking of new stuff, this stuff in Ukraine, bruh, son, what the fuck is going on? I honestly don't even want to talk about that because I'm going to save that for um, – an episode with Zoran, uh, who's from the Eastern of the Europe's. Uh, we can really chat it out, uh, tell you guys our opinions about Vladimir Putin. Um, why can't I see archived? Uh, let's see. Wait, I might be able to do it like this. Let's go. View insights. There we go. 
Bro, honestly, I don't think I can pull up the the um, questions from my laptop, and I'm using my phone to film right now. But I do remember two of them offhand. Um, I think like a Ken John a fan account asked me how was it meeting Ken. Dude, it was surreal, man. It was surreal. Like, um, my first experience of Ken ever was, you know, in The Hangover 1, uh, which is, I believe, 2007, 2008. I thought this, you know, seeing a an, an, an Asian guy on the big screen that wasn't Jackie Chan, that wasn't Jet Li, n- none of the martial art artists, and um, especially in the comedy scene, seeing him in a movie, I was just like, oh, my God, this guy's fucking hilarious. He came out uh, balls to the wall, you know what I'm saying, like, literally, like, naked like it was sick um tiny pp and everything he really represented the asian culture you know what i say uh, but yeah homeboy uh came on and you know i ever since then i followed him throughout you know the community some of his other projects um the other hangovers he, he was in um like small parts of like uh he, he would get small parts and whenever i see him i'd be so excited like in his role in marvel and um some of the other movies out there uh big name movies and ken had always been like oh like such an inspiration because uh you know and it, it's the same way i feel about simi Lu. um when there's an asian guy uh oh actually not just simi Lu. uh sorry uh also what is his name glenn from the walking dead fuck what is his name dude i can't i can't do this to myself I'm I'm just referring him as Glenn to Walking Dead because that's where I found him. But uh, he does amazing. Oh yeah, Stephen Yun. I, I I suck as an Asian for not knowing his name off the top. Stephen Yun is literally one of the goats. But anyways, like guys like that, you know, Bobby Lee. They really paved the way for people in entertainment. And uh, you know, even though I don't consider myself an actor, a comedian yet, I am gonna do stand up soon. I've been writing material. Um, I, even though I'm not in those fields yet, I, I feel like I am dabbling in, in entertainment with these podcasts, with the, uh, you know, the fucking, the fucking, the fuckity fuck, the YouTube. Um, yeah, you know, they, they just really inspired me for showing me that if you're an Asian American or Asian in general, uh, you can go out your box. You can do some shit that, you know, white people be doing. You know what I'll say? You know what I'll say? Um, and it, it's cool, man. It's always dope to be seen. And, you know, being an Asian, you're always so boxed in of like, oh, no, you got to be smart. So just stick to the Like Ken, Ken was a doctor, bro. Like that's such stereotypical. And then boom, you hear an actor, comedian, like you don't see many Asians doing that. Now, nowadays, there are more like Jimmy O. Yang, some of the goats out there, you know. But um, even then, like it doesn't even, it doesn't compare to, like entertainment a- Asians in the entertainment field does not even come close with an exception of like K-pop. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not counting music. Doesn't come close to the American side of things or even the Latin side of things like, but so, so I love that we're building our way up, you know? And so, um, meeting Ken was just insane. Cause all this, all this stuff I told you has been how I felt about him. And then the day that he came, I found out that it was his TV show. I got to go on. I was just like, what in the, freak and then i was just like oh my god like i'm really gonna meet him the day happened Uh, i didn't get to meet him until i actually stepped on stage we were shooting already so i met him and he was like loon doe from greensboro i was like hey and um you guys seen it on tv one of the first scenes it was one of the first things that we talked about was he was like you're from greensboro and i was like yeah man i know you're from greensboro and you know it also that's another crazy thing the fact that he's from greensboro like or he grew up in greensboro like I grew up in Greensboro for majority of my life um, since age one. So we really bonded. And and one of the best things about Ken that I will compliment him on, and, like, I know this is a long, like, dragged out compliment uh, that I'm giving, but he, unlike a lot of celebrities, um, is somewhat genuine, more genuine than a lot of celebrities. Uh, I met a fair amount uh, even on that episode and, and other uh, projects I've been on. He is one of the only people to follow up with me, to DM me, and to post me and tag me with stuff. Like, I know it's partly promoting his own brand and promoting his show, but he didn't have to do the little bits and pieces like um, reposting my uh, my visit on the news. Uh, there was one clip that didn't even mention the show. He reposted it, tagged me. Fucking sick. Um, and, you know, he DM'd me a little bit. Like, not not like 
crazy stories or anything, but like, you know, short DMs, uh, thanking each other and everything like that, man. Uh, I really appreciate you, Ken. I, I, you're probably not watching this, but you know, hopefully one day, um, maybe down the road, I could get him on this podcast. That would be insane to me. Uh, but yeah, that was my experience uh, of meeting Ken. Thank you for asking. And I know I had one more question. It was from Tom, my fucking lover. I love you, Tom. Sexy boy. Speaking of sexy Asians that are like top of the cream of the crop Asians, Tom is a cream of the crop Asian. You guys probably have no clue who I'm talking about. His name is Tom True. Um, <laughs> true. Uh, yeah, so Tom asked me if I remember the experience of in our childhood where someone put a body bag in their car. So let me tell you guys this story real quick. So, okay, this is from my perspective, okay? All I remember is I was really young, so I had to have been six or seven. Um, Tom was one of my boys because, you know, we went to school together. We would walk to school together, everything like that. And both our parents being Vietnamese, they were, they would hang out. Um, I, I believe Tom was there. I know dark, I know dark was there. Cause he's the one who always talks about this, uh, dark. They were older than me. Uh, dark was what? 27 now. So he was probably 10 at the time. Uh, Tom is an, a year or two older than me. So he was probably like eight or nine, but he was a big boy, you know, <laughs> Tom, a big boy. Yao Ming out there, you know what I'm saying? Um, but anyways, I remember we were hanging out and it was above the elementary school that uh, I lived really close to, or we all lived close to. And I don't know why, but I don't visibly remember seeing the guys put the body bag in to a car. But this is exactly what I remember. I remember hanging out with my friends and from a distance, like a distance, seeing a car with two dudes coming out. That's all I saw. And then I think, I guess I was turning away, but I remember, this is what I remember, Tom uh, and everyone. Uh, I remember the group freaking out. So I think you guys saw the next part where I didn't, I turned away at this point. Cause the only thing I vaguely, like not vaguely, um, the only thing that I actually like in depth remember was you guys freaking out. I, I don't remember exactly what happened. I just know you guys were freaking out and you guys started running up the uh, hill or something or not the hill, the street, the inverted street. And I, you know, me, me being fucking six or seven, I'm fucking scared too. So I'm running with you guys. Um, that's what I remember. And then I remember you guys keep talking about the body bag. Like you, you guys saw, what what you guys might have saw or what they claim to see, my friends, is that two dudes um, d have no clue how they look. Like, it's been so long. But two dudes came out of, like, a sketchy-looking car, and they put uh, the, what seems like a body bag into the trunk and then just drove off. And they did this in the parking lot of an elementary school, that, the elementary school that we all went to. Um, so I, I, I remember seeing the car, kind of, uh, the two people. And then I remember running away and I remember you guys saying stuff about it. But like, I, I, I think maybe I was too short and it's fucking see, or my eyesight sucked or something, but I didn't see the body back part. But, um, I did see the car driving away though. Once everything was gone, like from a distance, we saw it cause we were already up the hill or whatever. But yeah, that was a crazy uh, experience. Yeah. 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 Oh, speaking of body bags. Um, this is the last story I'm going to say. Uh, some of our girls saw a crime scene. I don't know if it was a crime scene, but it, it, uh, it was like a taped up scene in Miami. Uh, it was in set, uh, Midtown, Miami, and we were all getting food. We all split up for a little bit just to get food real quick, meet up, and then go to the airport. It was the last day. And two or three of the girls, no, no, three or four of the girls uh, came across cops uh, with taped up the square area, like a little like mini park. And there was a body bag and they, it, that was for sure. Like a dead dude. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he was killed, murdered, died, cancer, fucking sickness, uh, starvation. Like, but there was a dead dude. And like, yeah, like I, that's just so crazy, dude. They got a picture of it. And I was just like, fuck man. When you go to a big city like that, I, by the way, I'm moving like this. Cause I got to take a shit. Um, 45 minutes, huh? Pretty solid podcast. Or like, 
right under 45. Uh, things that are going on in my life. I'm trying to edit all these motherfucking videos. So you guys stay tuned for that. I got Florence coming up. I'm honestly going to try to upload two in one week. Like, I really need to knock these shits out because I have Cleveland to upload, Miami to upload. I'm about to film Houston, New York. I got so much shit going on. I'm going to Europe again, depending on how the war pans out like you know obviously that's way more important if shit like that pops out i'm not gonna go uh, i'll probably go to like south america or some shit but yeah hella stuff going on hella 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 stuff uh i want to do some projects uh beyond just you know i went to a soccer game definitely gonna go again uh some other shit going on um uh, do you want to get more people on my podcast uh oh i want to invite my friend uh maxwell on here as well just so much stuff i gotta take a shit so bad guys <laughs> thank you for listening i really appreciate you guys i really rambled in this one totally random stuff but if you guys listen to this you guys are my bestest bestest friend ever and if you guys are listening to this very message right now i really really appreciate you guys um let me know in the po uh, in the comments that you guys listen to the whole thing i want to send you guys an individual message thanking you if you guys watched it all um you guys are dope i really appreciate you guys and i'll see you guys next week i will have a guest um i believe it's gonna be a singer it that was a co-star in my episode on tv all right with that being said i hope you guys have a great week i'll see you guys next tuesday bye